Hi, my name is Kiri. I'm 25 years of age. And I don't want to live anymore. Did you hear what I said? We're all fed up of everything. Me, you, everyone. We just all fucking fed up of everything. To the point where so many people my age don't want to be here anymore. Don't want to live. Want to end their life. It's 2010 and it's New Year's. This may, may be the reason why I didn't like New Year's for many, many years after that. I think I'm alright with it now. It's 2010 and this is the year that Kiri's going to start. Come a bit closer. Secondary school! Yay! You're a big boy now! Kiri's around 10 or 11 years of age. And he was petrified. He was scared of a new start. He was scared of meeting new people. He was scared of change. But Kiri was a young boy and he didn't know anything, right? <sighs> it's going to be hard for me to say, but I'll keep it real. Kiri's downstairs with his sister. And it was either we cut up papers to like throw, so we were like cutting up newspapers the day before and we we're cutting, cutting, cutting. Or it was either like um, confetti or something, it was one or the other, maybe it was a mixture of both. And we're there cutting, whatever. And we're all downstairs. The clock ticks. Tick tock, tick. New Year's approaching. Kiri didn't understand what mental health was back then. He didn't understand that anxiety was a thing. He didn't understand that anxiety had a name. He just felt emotions. He felt scared because this was the year that everything was going to change. It's January and in September, yes, nine months, September is when he's going to start the new school and it's January. Nine month period, a young Kiri, and again I'll keep it real, was worrying. He was panicking. He was so scared. But no, no one around him knew that. It was just him suffering right there in his head alone, not having a clue how to deal with it. The clock started going tick tock, tick tock, and free. Two, one, hey! Everyone was celebrating it was a new year. But Kiri was petrified. Kiri wasn't celebrating, maybe on the external. But inside, he was suffering. He was suffering from anxiety. He was suffering so badly that he would do anything to not experience what he made up in his head as one of the biggest fears or the worst things he could ever happen to him. This is not the worst part. I'm coming a bit closer. Are you ready for some fucked up shit? Everyone celebrates and Kiri's always been kind of emotional on New Year's, but you know, he's trying to put on a brave face. And you know what the final no in the coffin was? You know that sign that gave me trauma for many, many years? My dad. Dad, I spoke to you about this on Christmas. You kind of acknowledge it and again, I'm not going to speak bad. I just have to tell the truth. He kind of just brushed it off and said, oh, you were young, it was time ago. And it was time ago. But for me, it was very traumatic. I'll never forget this. He picks up the papers on the floor and he chucks them in the air like this. And he dances around and says, yay, secondary school. Secondary school. 
secondary school. He knew I was petrified. And all Kiri wanted was a nice warm hug and some reassurance because he's always been a bit more sensitive than maybe the average guy. He's always been a bit more caring and a bit more loving. And instead his own dad took the piss out of him at such a young age and scarred him. You know what happened and what followed? Nine months go by and more or less every other day, Kiri was, I was sick. Right downstairs and I can see my kitchen sink. There's a reflection and I'll be sick and I'll look up and I'll see my reflection again and again and again and again. My mum would hear me be sick in the upstairs toilet. You know what she said to me? Are you okay? And I'll say, yeah, yeah, I think the food was just like not nice and wrong. She's like, okay. She knew what was going on. And so did I. At that time, I didn't want to be alive because I was scared. And it's never been my dad's fault or anyone's fault. He added salt to the wounds. And maybe that's just him trying to be funny whatever time's gone by. I don't talk bad about anyone, but I know he's very insecure. And I know deep down he's threatened by me. I know it. I feel like I'm everything that he wish he was at my age. Shouldn't be intimidated by your kids, right? But that's just him and his upbringing. It wasn't the best and he's done really well and I'm proud of him, but I know he's insecure about me and friend. But that was all my fault. And it wasn't really anyone's fault, but I take responsibility. And it was a hard pill to swallow. And it was a lesson I had to learn. Where am I going with all of this? And how does this relate to you? The thing that you're putting off, the thing that's traumatic, the thing that's so difficult you have to just take a small step you have to just try your best in the right direction to try and solve it or to try and overcome it or to face it head on there was something wrong with me at 10 to 11 years of age fast forwards secondary school starts is okay but i'm still anxious about certain things fast forwards i get my first ever girlfriend I'm still vomiting. I'm still anxious. I still didn't understand what the f was going on until I faced it head on. And it was hurtful. And it was difficult. And it was scary. It was so scary. But it was the best thing I could have done because I actually understood what anxiety was. And now you see me today never giving a f. That's how I'm so confident because of what I've been through and I get it. I get that boy all those years ago. I get what he went through and I get you as well. You just have to keep the faith and try slowly over time to face what you're putting off or the hard experience head on because this alcohol Drugs, porn, escapes. Ah, oh, YouTube. All of this shit is escapisms, and the only way you overcome it is you face it head on. I know it's scary. I know, and it hurts me as well. And I know, I know, I know. I get you. <laughs> I get you. But there's no other way. You just have to do it slowly. Hold a fucking, hold a comfort blanket, or your, your, your family, anyone, go with people, anything. Just try and face it head on. I wish I'd done that all those years ago rather than just neglecting it. But again, I, my brain wasn't developed. I didn't understand what was going on. I, I was so naive. But I see it clearer than ever now. And that's what I've taken it into the future of my life. And 
I haven't looked back since because I'm so f proud. And so ha happy it doesn't exist but whatever in my eyes, but I'm so happy of the person I am now and who I will become. And I'm so fing proud of myself for being my true authentic self for the world to see. I'm here for you. Drop me a message, anything. I'm here, I hope you. And uh, take care. Thank you. If you want to fix your life today or have access to my free self-improvement guide, all links will be down below. If you also like one-on-one coaching sessions or like to learn from my Skillshare classes, all links down below. <laughs>